Let's compare the UTXO versus the account-based model used by Bitcoin and Ethereum respectively. First, let's define what is needed to form a transaction, a sender, an amount, someone to receive that amount, and some collision-resistant authorization from the sender. It wouldn't make sense for our network to just willy-nilly be sending funds all over the place without the people owning those funds approving that transfer, right? So we get that authorization via digital signatures. We covered this last week, digital signature being basically a hash that is extremely hard to replicate if you do not have the proper inputs. In this case, a private key proving that you own some funds, right? And that you want to move them to someone. That's that's the way these digital decentralized networks agree to move funds via proper authorization. So in the account-based model, this is the one we're very familiar with. If you've ever used a bank or some sort of Web 2.0 account that manages some sort of balance, this is typically what is used. It keeps track of an overall account state without without keeping track of too much too many specifics. So for example, in a bank account, you would have $15.76, but it wouldn't keep track of the denominations that got you there, right? It wouldn't keep track of the fact that you deposited two dimes one time and those two dimes are under your name. No, you deposited two dimes, which equals 20 cents, and those 20 cents were added to your balance, right? That's the way account-based models work. They just keep track of some overall state, no specifics. So here, Alice has $10. Uh, she sends... Bob $5. So in the account state model, it just updates both of their users' balance, overall balance, to reflect the, the change post the transaction, right? Uh, a potential vulnerability out of the account-based model is replay attacks, right? Because even if you're, if you're sending a, an authorized transaction to the network, what if a, a malignant actor... Uh, replays that transaction many times, potentially draining you of your of your funds. So here, Alice got replay attacked because someone rebroadcasted her transaction, and that transaction had full authorization, right? So it went through, and now Bob has ten dollars, and Alice has been kind of liquidated. So uh, what Ethereum uses to protect against replay attacks is actually a nonce. Uh, the Ethereum account state includes a nonce. So every time you send an authorized transaction to the network, a nonce value is included with it. That way, if if a new if a if another miner or another node sees your transaction and it has a different nonce than the one in your account state, it won't look at it. It will say, ah, this has already been mined. So that's how Ethereum protects against replay attacks. So Ethereum uses accounts, Bitcoin uses UTXOs. So just to define UTXOs, this is kind of a more, it's a very different model where it just does keep track more of like the specific denominations that got you to your overall balance. So just to kind of read off here, unspent transaction outputs, uh, this is a system in which all coins are not the same. So a cool fun fact to impress your NFT obsessed friends is the first NFT collection technically is Bitcoin because all Bitcoins are non-fungible tokens based on the UTXO model. So all Bitcoins are actually UTXOs. Uh, So the way this works is, remember when I said like you deposited two dimes worth, you know, 20 cents and the bank, you know, doesn't keep track of, of those specific deposits, Bitcoin in a way does. So when you receive some Bitcoin, you actually receive a specific UTXO allowing you to spend that amount of Bitcoin, uh, you know, specifically. So whenever you want to resend that Bitcoin or respend it, you have to point to that specific UTXO. It would be kind of like saying you'd point back to that specific dime that you despo- d- deposited, right? And just just to make the note, Coin is a term abstraction. It when people say, "Oh, I got ten Bitcoin," they really they really mean I have a bunch of UTXOs that, when you sum them up and consume them all, equal about ten Bitcoin, right? So we're we're playing with term abstractions for easier understanding. You consume these UTXOs, and out of them, new ones are created. Even even minor fees, even change from a transaction, all become UTXOs. The UTXO model is very reminiscent of cash. So you walk up to a store 
and you hand the clerk ten dollars, or you 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 purchase a soda and a chocolate bar, you hand the clerk ten dollars. Um, the the clerk will will subtract the you know what you owe from your purchase and give you back change. Bitcoin is actually very similar to this. So say you you pay for a car using a UTXO worth ten Bitcoin and the car is worth eight Bitcoin. The way Bitcoin works is you'd actually get a UTXO back worth two Bitcoin, your change. It's very much like cash, right? So it's a specific UTXO that you end up owning, but you have to consume the entire 10 Bitcoin balance. So in Bitcoin, as a final point, each each UTXO has a script associated to it. Most commonly, the script is just, you know, some lock conditions put on the UTXO that can typically only be unlocked by the owner of the private key to which uh, to which that UTXO was was spent or sent, right? So in the UTXO system, uh, the transactions kind of more resemble this model where you have a table and you have some input to your to your transaction, and you have some output out of it. This is what a transaction looks like in the Bitcoin system, right? So the way it works is when you're constructing your transactions out, you have to literally point back to the specific UXO, UTXO in order to spend it. So it kind of looks like this. Say I'm trying to buy a car and Alice and Carol have both in the past paid me somehow in Bitcoin. I need to point to their specific outputs saying that they're paying me in order to consume them and create further outputs out of that. So if I'm buying a car, one of these outputs would be the car dealership. One of these outputs is probably changed back to myself. And one of these outputs is gas fees or, or minor fees. So it, it kind of ends up looking like this. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a system that kind of interwebs all these transactions, but you have to point back specifically to them and actually to the outputs of transactions, right? So this was, say, you know, Bob's old old transaction. Uh, he fed some inputs into it. And one of those outputs, say it was for me, I need to refer back to that specific output and and uh, produce what I need to, to produce, which is, you know, basically my private key uh, or a digital signature stating that I own that private key in order to further spend that UTXO. So uh, just some quick just some quick uh, consensus rules summary uh, for UTXOs, because you're going to actually look at this in one of the coding challenges. The sum of your inputs for constructing a transaction must be less than or equal to your outputs, right? You, you can't spend more than you own, pretty much, uh, or you can't yeah, pretty much that. And for every input, you need to produce the proper verification that you can spend that output. And that's basically by unlocking the the script that lives in that in that UTXO. So let's just go through this quick example. Say Bob is he just mined two blocks. He's on top of the world, right? So since he mined two blocks, the current Bitcoin block reward is 6.25 Bitcoin as UTXOs, right? So if you mine a block, you get one UTXO worth 6.25 Bitcoin. So say Bob wants to buy a new sports car for 10 Bitcoin. Uh, let's let's follow this flow, right? So Bob approaches the dealership and the car dealership says, hey, well, the price is 10 Bitcoin, Bob. But Bob, given he mined two, two Bitcoin blocks, he has 12.5, right? Uh, so Bob is looking at his UTXOs and he's saying, wait a second, I have two UTXOs worth 6.25 Bitcoin, but this guy is asking me for 10 Bitcoin, right, for the car. So what Bob does is he adds the the um, the two UTXOs together and then subtracts what his change would be. And this is the final outcome. What happens is Bob constructs a transaction in which he feeds his two UTXOs worth 6.25 in uh, uh, Bitcoin. And out of that transaction, there's a couple of outputs. One output goes to the car dealership with the flag, with the spent pl- flag marked as false, right? Uh, because that's a fresh output. So one output worth 10 Bitcoin goes to the car dealership. One output worth two Bitcoin, Bob's change goes back to him. And one output worth 0.5 Bitcoin goes directly 
as transaction fees. So that's a pretty pretty nice uh, transaction fees for the miner for the miners here in this interaction. So Bob now has his car and he has a fresh UTXO worth two Bitcoin. That's how it works in the UTXO system. It's very much like cash. Bob is happy and Bob buy now. So why are we covering UTXOs? It's important to cover Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the first blockchain ever. So out of Bitcoin, obviously a lot is modeled in Ethereum. So getting these systems uh, you know, understood early on at the low level gives you a much more you know, strong platform to talk about these systems, to discuss the systems, to you know, go to conferences, research, explore, and develop more holistically, develop dApps more holistically, develop research more holistically, right? And analyzing the UTXO model really helps us because it gives us a, a perspective, a relative perspective to the account-based model of Ethereum, right? We just, we don't dive directly into the account-based model. We actually look at the UTXO model, a very, a very prominent model used by a popular blockchain like Bitcoin, and compare and contrast it to the account-based model. And it makes us think, why did Ethereum go with the account-based model? Mm, you know what? Because Ethereum has a lot of eph- ephemeral data. There's changing data. The state is always being updated. The plug times are different. So there's trade-offs in choosing these, uh, these models to keep track of user balances. Good luck, and good luck with tree data structures.